For a theory to be scientific, it must be falsifiable. That is, one must be able to prove that it is false if it is. In other words, you have to be able to test the theory. Now, we creationists have contended for decades that evolution is not falsifiable, that the myth of evolution is very much like water. It will conform to whatever shape you pour it into. The evolution myth will conform to whatever evidence you give it. For example, we are pointed to the homology of bird, horse, whale, and human limb bones being similar, and thus allegedly evidence of evolution. We're told this makes sense because these creatures all diverged from a common unknown amphibian ancestor, which presumably had a limb with similar limb bones. This is called divergent evolution. The organisms all came from the same ancestor, and so they each kept some of the traits of the common ancestor. Please notice that this evidence can also be interpreted within the context of a common designer. In other words, the bird, horse, whale, and human have similar bones because they were all designed by the same designer. However, we find countless examples of similar traits between organisms that do not have an alleged common ancestor with the same trait. For example, the developing circuitry in the noses of fruit flies and humans. Fruit flies and humans are far, far apart from each other on the evolutionary tree. Their common ancestor did not have the same circuitry. So while this evidence still makes sense if they had a common designer, the puzzle pieces don't fit together for evolution. Suddenly, evolutionary theory has no explanation for the evidence, and so a new form of evolution is invented. Convergent evolution. Evolution is assumed to be fact, therefore humans and the fruit flies must have developed the same circuitry completely on their own. If the evidence does not fit, make it fit. The evolution myth, instead of being falsified by the evidence, simply conforms to the evidence. Darwin even admitted that the eye was mind-bogglingly complex and struggled with an explanation for how one eye arose. To suppose that the eye, with its inimitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances, for admitting different amounts of light, and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration, could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. Well, forget about THE eye evolving by chance processes and natural selection. According to conventional evolutionary thinking, quote, Complex, image-forming eyes evolve some 50 to 100 times. But if you read further on down the article, you find out what they mean. Whether one considers the eye to have evolved once or multiple times depends somewhat on your definition of an eye. <laughs> Wait a minute here. Not only is it downright impossible to evolve an eye, you need to do it as much as 100 times? Uh, this doesn't make the impossible more possible. It makes it more impossible, because now you have to do the impossible multiple times. There is none so blind as those who do not know what an eye is. But speaking of sight, evolution and natural selection does not have any foresight. Well, until it's needed. And then evolution once again conforms to the evidence. The bacterial flagellum is an inboard-outboard motor on a bacteria, composed of multiple parts, all of which are essential to the system. It is irreducibly complex. 
If you remove any one part of the system, the whole system fails to do its job of propulsion. Now, while such systems are easily and readily explained by an intelligent designer, what could the system evolve from? If any part had not yet evolved, the whole system doesn't work. So the ancestor has to make parts for something that doesn't yet exist. Now, even though there's no reason why an organism would do this, this is precisely what is claimed with pre-adaptation, also known as co-option or exaptation. The process by which parts accumulate until they're ready to snap together is called pre-adaptation. When evolution does not have an explanation for the evidence, evolution is still assumed and thus not falsified. A new form of evolution must be invented to save the evolution myth. Well, the pieces of the puzzle don't fit. Make them fit. The evidence wasn't quite adding up. The pieces fit together so well that they were in an impossible position. The perfect fit was an illusion, but all was not lost. The scientist determined that he could restore the pieces to their original shape. He cut the damaged pieces and put them back together the way they were before the pieces got damaged. It was a tricky job, but after restoring the pieces, the jigsaw puzzle looked exactly like we expected. As you can see, when we compare the puzzle to one that we know was created and designed, we can tell that our puzzle had no intelligent designer and was the result of chance processes. Onwards, upwards evolution is supposed to gain new genetic information, new biological and physical traits. But of course, as I showed in Crevo rant number 78, we know that we are continually losing genetic information. We are deteriorating. We are losing functions. For example, axolots, newts, and zebrafish can grow back damaged or lost tissue and appendages, but close evolutionary relatives cannot do this. Dr. Kenneth Poss said, Interestingly, some species have the ability to regenerate appendages, while even fairly closely related species do not. This leads us to believe that during the course of evolution, regeneration is something that has been lost by some species, rather than an ability that has been gained by other species. Well, does that then mean that evolution has been falsified? Oh, of course not! Haven't you learned yet? Evolution is assumed true no matter what the evidence shows. If the evidence shows the opposite of evolution, eh, just give it a fancy name. Call it evolution. In this case, reductive evolution. So, as you can see, it does not matter what the evidence is. It is interpreted within the evolutionary paradigm and then claimed to be proof of the evolutionary paradigm. A perfect circular argument. You either have devoted divergence, convenient convergence, perfect pre-adaptation, or random reduction. Obviously, evolution is not falsifiable. Therefore, it is not a scientific theory. It is mythology. In the meantime, all the evidence can be interpreted easily within the intelligent designer paradigm. There is no force fitting of the evidence. And in fact, in cases like irreducible complexity, if you saw a vehicle or an electric motor somewhere, you would assume it was intelligently designed. But who is that intelligent designer? Our best minds and talent on planet Earth cannot produce anything even vaguely resembling the complexity and incredible efficiency of the bacterial motor and flagellum. Someone designed it who had the capability to design a motor so small that you could fit 8 million of them on the tip of one of your hairs. Who is that creator? It's none other than Jesus Christ, who also created a body to sacrifice for your sins and mine. But it comes with a price. You must give him your life in return, withholding nothing. And through him, you can enter into the new heaven and new earth and eternal life. Why don't you call upon him to recreate you anew today?
Thank you.